Quale, man, what's the deal? What's up, my dog? How you doing, Lando? You all right? Everything been good with you? Hell yeah, man. Everything smooth, man. You see, see, bro, see, like, this shit, this shit big as hell. This shit big as hell for 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 a nigga like me, bro. You feel me? Cause like, I I I I grew up. Shit, my my motherfucking. I probably had to be like in fourth fifth grade, fourth fifth grade, some shit like that. When uh, you know what I'm saying? When y'all really start taking off, you feel me? Doing the thing like when it reached up here, you feel me? Like on a on a national thing. But I really want to get the story from you. You feel me? Like how it happened for on the outside looking in. Cause all we know, you feel me, motherfuckers. My generation, bro. I'm 25. You feel me? Like. You know what I'm saying? I know shit. Y'all motherfucking changed the world with that snap music shit. All I know right. shit, nigga. Y'all changed the world with that shit, bro. Like, nigga, like, shit, that, that that really opened up a whole lane, a whole lane for the whole next generation coming in with the niggas doing the dance of the music shit even going on right now. And so 20 years strong. 20 years strong. So for the motherfuckers who don't know, you feel me? Introduce yourself. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you coming to the hip hop lab, my nigga. Um, for everybody who watching, uh, I'm Parlay. Um, the franchise boys. Um, I used, you know, I used to have a dread back in the day for some of y'all young artists. You know what I'm saying? For the old, one, you know what I'm saying? People know who I am. And when it came to the group, everybody, you know, personally identified with me. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was just, I, I think it was just energy. You know what I'm saying? Like this whole wave that everybody talking about. Like my energy was was the prime source of it. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I never really just sit here and think about, you know, the time because, you know, they happened and nigga just kept, you know, kept living. You know what I'm saying? But as I sit here and think about this shit, like, where I don't came from and where this shit at now, hip-hop been up for 40 years, bro. Hip-hop only been alive for 40 years. And 20 of this shit, in 20 years, all the music sound like shit that the franchise boys started. To this day, all the dance songs, all East Coast, West Coast, New York, Midwest, all their music sound like bankhead music. So, you know, and then like, I want to shout out to all the groups, you know what I'm saying, but before us, you know what I'm saying, who, you know, who put the spotlight on Atlanta. But right now, I'm going to just speak on bankhead. Because even before it was me, everybody in the world was doing the bankhead bounce. Before I even start rapping. And then you fast forward, then you got Kilo Ali. Kilo Ali probably first on the street underground artist who really blew up nationally. You know what I'm saying? All this shit from Bank Kid. Fast forward to when we came in the game. You see what I'm saying? Like, ever since we came in the game, shit been on Bank Kid and music been sounding like our music. They been sounding like Lil Jon. They been sounding like Outkast. It ain't been sounding like those before us. You know what I'm saying? So that's a big notion within itself. And then, like, we didn't just, like, when it comes to hip hop, you got, like, two parts of, you know, you got the music part and you got the culture part. We impacted both with the culture and the sound. We're making everybody, well, I don't give a fuck where you from or how you dress. When we came out, you dressed like us. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck where you, what you did music or where you was from. When we came out, everybody started sounding like us. Niggas don't never give us the credit for that shit. And 20 years fucking later, niggas is still making music sound like ours. All these TikTok videos, the first thing put you in mind of French Eye Boy. Immediately. You see what I'm saying? And not just us, like what D4L did and the people, the ones who came behind us, you know what I'm saying? And DJ Unk and all them. I, I fast forward after then to when the Shot Boys came. See, the Shot Boys from my project too. You know what I'm saying? They came and start and made niggas well skinny clothes. Yeah, see, see, and, and with me, with me, with me watching the shit that, that you was doing the last couple of days, the last a couple few days ago, like with y'all, you and Fabo and shit going back and forth, like to like the history and shit. shit I, I didn't know the shot boys came from where y'all came from. Like that's big as hell. You feel me? See, like, like let me tell you, be homie, just to be honest, all us stand born home. D four from born home. I'm from born home. Shot boys from born home. See, in, in my hood, we didn't know Fabo like that. We started fucking with Fabo when he became part of D4L. You see what I'm saying? See, this is at a time back then where niggas in the hood don't hang together, bro. You know what I'm saying? Niggas in this hood don't hang with niggas in that hood. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is back then. You see what I'm saying? But you got to understand, like, the song that Fabo would talk about, the money song, 
was the song that he said like really started like jump this whole little little, little movement off. That was my song. See, I was a solo artist. We were in a group. White T was my song. So White uh, T was my song featuring them. Even that, what 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 made you want to be? Like what foreign franchise boy? If the with the money song going so crazy, you feel me? Even with Lean with a Rock with it, you said, or was it White T? You said it was your song originally. Which one? Was Lean it? with a Rock with it. Lean with a Rock was your. So what made you want to do the group thing then? You could have just did that shit solo. Because see, like we started in see like this shit, all of this shit, this whole, this whole, this whole energy wave started. In 2000, all right. See, like the only people who doing music from outside of town, besides like Kilo and the, or some of the older artists I'm talking about, and they was doing like bass music, like dance music, you know, way back then. You know what I'm saying? This is like when Raheem the Dream, but this way from like 2000 on up, the only people who were doing music was Lil Mark and Moby. You know what I'm saying? And they had a song out then called Front Street Woke. You know what I'm saying? And they had a little dance to it. But nobody was trying to be rappers still. Niggas weren't trying to rap still. And niggas weren't making dance songs still. Niggas didn't start trying to rap and make dance songs until we dropped. And like I said, this shit started in 2000. When I was in high school, we had a language art festival where everybody get a chance to perform and do whatever you, you know, whatever your, whatever your, your art is. You know what I'm saying? You got to think, bro. I never tried to be a rapper. Never wanted to be a rapper. Never pursued being a rapper. Even to this day, I drop music because I like music. But I'm not out here just trying to do everything I can to be known. If that's the case, there's a lot of shit I can talk about. I am the city in the streets. Any nigga from Atlanta gonna tell you this. You see what I'm saying? But when I dropped this song, Money, that it was just, I didn't even have a verse. I mean, I didn't have a beat. It was really an acapella. I really wrote, wrote it like a poem, kind of like a poem for a man. Chester got down so I don't have to go to four period at Language Arts Festival. So when I did it, the whole school go crazy. This when I was in 10th grade. You know what I'm saying? So Pimp, in the group Pimpin', he was like, shit, bro, you need to record that shit, bro. And I was like, I don't got no beat. I don't, you know, I don't know nothing about that shit. So he pursued making beats. This is what started Pimp to make beats. All right? So we graduate, I mean, 10th grade over, 11th grade come back. Me and Pimp end up playing on the same basketball team. So before the, before the games, Pimp got he a beat on the locker. And I'll rap my verse. And all everybody on the basketball team will rap this shit and everybody be, be singing the lyrics. Like Sunset Park. You know what I'm saying? Sunset Park when they in the locker room singing this shit. That's how this shit was in high school. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so you know, was making beats and he'll be trying to get me to come to the to his apartment and record. See, you got to understand, bro, I've been hustling since I've been a young nigga. You know what I'm saying? So these times I'm in high school, I'm selling weed. I'm, I sell this, I'm the one of the Hot weed sellers at my school. You see what I'm saying? Like, I was smoking before basketball games. I smoked before practice. Like, my coach knew I smoked. Like, nigga, bro, how I am now? I've been like this. I ain't just get like this. You see what I'm saying? So, fast forward it, 12th grade, Pimp ended up going to another school. You know what I'm saying? So, I didn't see Pimp our whole, the whole 12th grade year. I didn't see him not one time. Not even in the streets. Because I'm telling you, this is a time where Niggas don't go hang with other niggas. Because people from Allen Temple. So I don't go to Allen Temple because I'm from Born Home. You see what I'm saying? So when I graduate, Buddy ended up persuading me to come to college. You know what I'm saying? And I went to college to sell weed. That's why I went to school. You know what I'm saying? And, and so I ended up going to school. So at the time, it wasn't no instrumentals. So it's not like you can hear a nigga beats. Nobody really made beats. All the instrumentals you heard was like big song that was on the radio. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So every time I hear instrumental, I would rap my verse and my hook to this money song. All right? So we come from orientation. We go back first day of school. I'm walking down the sidewalk. I hear this beat playing and I start rapping this verse. And as I'm rapping, I'm like, oh shit, this shit go right with this song. So I follow the sound all the way to the boys door. And when I go to the room, guess the fuck, guess who it is sitting at the fucking table? Pimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And he looking at me like, what the fuck you doing? He, I'm like, nigga, yeah, I'm in college. He like, you ain't in school. I'm like, yeah, nigga, I'm in school, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, remember that song? He like, yeah, I'm like, listen to this shit. He like, let's record it. 
We recorded that shit that day. We recorded that money song right that day, the first day of college. So I would perform this song at all the colleges, all the all the um, because I went to a black college. So I would perform these songs at all the black colleges around Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? Joseph C. Smith, like all them colleges like that. And the song was hot. Like, all the schools fucked it with it. So in our first break, we brought this shit home to the pool palace. You know what I'm saying? I went back to school second semester of my my freshman year. That was the beginning of 2003. Pimp stayed home. And they still kept going to the pool palace. So while I'm in school, my song Money is the hottest song in the streets. So so when I come, I, I back every break I come back, my freshman year, boom. So that summertime in 2003, like we re- I, we got the hottest song. So that that when I came back for summertime, we, that's when we recorded White Tea. You know what I'm saying? And we would go uh, all the whole summertime. We we record a little mixtape and we we go do these songs. And I was getting shows for my song Money. So we would go perform White Tea first, and then we'll do my song Money. You know what I'm saying? For the for the show, for the paid show. When I went back to school, first semester of my sophomore year, White T started popping. So now I got two songs popping in the club. Still at this time, homie, niggas is still not trying to be rappers. All right? But now you're starting to get more niggas interested in it like, shit, if they can do it, I can do it. All right? First semester, so I go to school first semester. All right? Then I get, I end up getting to a fight like the first month. Like my first month of school, I get, get got into a fight. They expelled. You know what I'm saying? When I came home, white tea was hard. So, Coco brother used to do high school, like the schools back then, the pet rallies. All right? This whole time from 2002 to 2003, this is when throwbacks is real popular. All right? So, me and my whole hood, I would wear throwbacks every fucking weekend. I would go to the club every weekend with a three four hundred dollar three four hundred throwback on. With the hat, with the throwback, with the boots, and the, and the, and the F-O ones to match it. Like, I been getting money. You see what I'm saying? And at this time, niggas are still not rapping. But we got, it, Coco Brother was at his middle school on Bankhead. And he took his throwback off. And all the kids in the school start running around jumping, screaming, Yep, him my white teeth. Yep, him my white teeth. So Coco brother reached out to Moot B and was like, do you know who these guys is? And Moot B linked us up with Coco brother and then we put the business together, all this shit together, and the song ended up getting on the radio. So in six months of recording White Teeth, we end up getting a deal. Because like three, after like two or three months of this song playing on the radio, White Teeth is the number one song on the radio. We don't got no deal. We don't, we're not signing nobody. We don't even have a label. We don't even have a group name yet. We didn't come up with them franchise boys. We didn't come up with them franchise boys until we had the meeting with the labels to figure out who we were going to sign to. And the Rory franchise came because Pimp was calling himself the franchise, like on the beats. Because when it started out, it was supposed to be like, Pimp was going to make the beats and I was going to rap. All right? So what happened was is, in college, I made Buddy start rapping because Buddy made me start coming to college. So we started doing it collectively. When Pimp stayed home, him and Jizzle start recording in, in, in Atlanta Temple while I was still in school. So when I came back, me, Pimp, Buddy, and Jizzle, all of us was together, you know, in the studio recording. So when the deal came, I was just like, all of us been grinding. So she, we might as well just be a group. And that's how we end up being a franchise group. That's hard. That's hard. So, bro, from from like from like shit, my perspective, motherfucking y'all dropped that album. You feel me? <laughs> y'all dropped that album. That bitch went crazy. You feel me? And, and and y'all y'all definitely had some some big songs. Went platinum. Had big ass singles and shit. But when we stopped hearing when we stopped hearing from the franchise boys, like you feel me? Like what like what was the reason for that? Like what what like do, do you feel like? Like it, it was the, the the shit with Jermaine Dupri. Like you feel me? Do you feel like it was just bad promotion? I, I know you had caught a case, all type of shit. Like, what 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 do you feel like was the reason y'all didn't come with come with another one and just fuck the streets up again? Well, you, you, I think it was a few things. Like, you got to understand, we got a deal in six months. Right. Like we didn't we didn't really know we didn't really know nothing about this shit. Like we ain't had nobody. From what we from, say y'all need to rap. This is what y'all need to do. So all this shit we was doing was new. You know what I'm saying? 
And when we caught, like, we was on the road so much. You know what I'm saying? And, like, if anybody know me personally, they know how I am. Like, like I'm a street nigga. Like, that's what I am. You know what I'm saying? And we would go places and people would get us fucked up because niggas thought we was on some, like, some bubblegum Laffy Taffy shit. You know what I'm saying? And I had to fuck niggas up like a lot of places that we went. You know what I'm saying? It done been times where it done been times where I don't I don't try to shoot people from on the stage and the whole crowd, everybody start running and people start running out the club and shit. Like I done been through some shit like and I that hit me personally. You know what I'm saying? Because like the rest of my group members, they're not like me. You know what I'm saying? Like all them niggas is from the hood, but they not like me. You see what I'm saying? And I always felt like the music that I wanted to make, I really could make with the group. So I was on some like, I'm going to do my own shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm not on, oh, I think they like me. Because at the time I had left the group. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And oh, I think they like me and lean with a rock with it were both out at the same time. All right? So in 2002, I had my money song. In 2003, we had White Teeth. In, 2000, in 2004, we had, oh, I think they liked me. Then I made Lean With a Rock with it at the end of 2004, like the beginning of 2005, like toward the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So, so, like, so, like, that whole time was just, was on point. So, what, what, what uh, like, you, 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 you hip, you hip to, uh, to, to Desi Banks? Yeah, you know he always be talking like like just saying the the parlay shit. Like you feel me? Like that shit ever irritate you? I mean, no, nah, man. It, it, see, I'm the type of person because I didn't well, understand I mean, it for the longest. You feel me? I think the shit was funny for like for years, bro. I didn't understand the joke, bro, until somebody broke it down to me. Like, no, nah, he talking about some fictional shit. I'm like, the fuck is this nigga talking about, bro? Like, like I mean, I'm see. I'm the type of person, bro, where I don't really worry about what another nigga do, bro. You see what I'm saying? Like, even though I know, like, in the history, niggas have never met a nigga named Parlay. To this day, niggas don't know niggas named Parlay, because niggas, that's not that nigga name they sell. You see what I'm saying? Because I hold, I held that shit down. You see what I'm saying? And, like, you know, so when he say that, a lot of people would be like, he got to be talking about this Parlay, because every, everything he explaining it, He's explaining this parlay that we know. That if he wanted to tell his joke, then how he tell his joke, and that's his thing. And niggas, it's like it's a lot of people in the city mad because he don't get me in skits and shit. But he don't got to get me in his skit. That's a home doing that. This is the hit thing. You know what I'm saying? I salute to him what he's doing his thing. And I respect it. I don't. It ain't in on me. If he make if he make ten billion out that shit, I'm not gonna be mad and feel like he owe me something because he's using my name. You see what I'm saying? That's just this between real niggas and fake niggas. Like, niggas talk that I'm real shit. You see what I'm saying? But another nigga, if, if I was another nigga, all these niggas would be in their feelings, homie. Facts. You see what I'm saying? I don't care nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? But I am I am going to do a skit, though. I am working on skits that I'm doing, like, when we start going back, when the shit open back up, where I'm going to go around the line, and I'm going to look, look for Paul A. And I'm going to tell him he can't use my name no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? be funny as fuck, dog. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> So I'm going to be pulling up in all the traps, like all the rap niggas that I fuck with and all the street niggas, yeah. I'm going to go to their hood and they trap. All the real niggas I fuck with who do music in Atlanta, I'm pulling, in that, I'm pulling up in their hood and I'm going to incorporate the city. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, the only thing he's doing is speaking about city shit. For so, sure, man. Hey, so this, this, this right here, bro, this is something I've been wanting to ask somebody from Bankhead, bro, since I, since, since I was a young nigga, man. I've been wanting to ask this question, though. I ain't going to lie. Is T.I. really from Bankhead, man? I can't speak for other people. You see what I'm saying? Because Bankhead is a long-ass fucking street. You see what I'm saying? And and it, you can't say it everywhere you're on being. But from my experience, I don't know Tip from Bankhead. You see what I'm saying? Not before he was, not before he was doing his music thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't personally know no stories or heard of him or heard, oh, he was just be down here. Like, I don't know personally. You know what I'm saying? I just know that when I was a young nigga and I'm fucking around 
and, and like I said, at this time, while I'm I'm just going to do my music thing. I just hear him like, nigga, on trap, trap, uh, on bo- dope boys in the trap. I dropped 33 off to my folks and born home. So I'm like, whoever this is, I'm fucking with him. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, he was repping the hood, so the hood embraced him. But as far as what happened before then, I don't know, so I can't speak on it. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. But what, what, I, I seen you, you know what I'm saying, bro? You know, I do my research and shit, you know what I'm saying, when I be doing interviews, and I always see you speak real highly of, of Shorty Low and shit, you feel me? So, like, growing up, you feel me, what, 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 what was his, what was his influence on, on Atlanta, you feel me, in, in the bone homes and shit like that? Well, you know, like, Shorty Low just was who he was. You see what I'm saying? You know how, like, I like people when, that's how you are. That's how you are. You know what I'm saying? Low was really in the street to get money. You know what I'm saying? See, I'm from born, like I said, I'm from born home, so I grew up watching Low. You know what I'm saying? When I was a young nigga, I grew up, oh shit, what Low? Oh, Low got the car, Low got the goddamn, the goddamn front earn and drop top around there on the flats. We ain't never seen no flats. Niggas is Ryan D's. I was one of the young niggas running around there, you know what I'm saying? Seeing what Low was doing. You know what I'm saying? But as I grew up, like, Low was really doing the shit that he was rapping about. You see what I'm saying? So, like, when Low came out and did his music, I always fucked it with Low. Because my, my big homie who raised me, him and Low was cool. Like, his name, he named Milo. He was one of the niggas on the song with Low, like, Ash Pony, Milo, Piro. Like, Milo, that's my big homie. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, Low was bankhead. Low was born home. When you thought about going home before all the other OGs, citywide, Niggas knew low. Low reputation been low reputation. Niggas knew how low get down. You know what I'm saying? So when I started doing it, low was like low tried to sign us. And me and low always had a relationship. Even despite all the shit that we went through, me and low always had a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And one thing about one thing he did, stay on Bankhead. Show everybody on Bankhead love and fuck with everybody who was on Bankhead. And you can't ask for nothing else. You see what I'm saying? So it's gonna forever be lonely or low. Period, man. R.I.P. Shorty Low. So, bro, when, 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 when did the when did the problems between you, you, you like, uh, like franchise boys and uh and D4L really kick off? And what, what, what was the what was the reason behind it? See, really, see, see, the behind story really had nothing to do with the music. You know what I'm saying? See, like, at the time, like, when you heard Fabo speak of the bass, the bass was Charlotte Trout Spot. That's what he called it, the bass. And he was over 24 hours. Everybody shot with Lowe. Everybody, like, nigga Lowe probably had the, the top trap in the hood. You see what I'm saying? But when we started selling two for fives, like, we put a hold on everything for, like, months. You know what I'm saying? Until niggas started getting on our way. And that, the tension started there. You know what I'm saying? In the hood. You see what I'm saying? And it carried over to the music. You see what I'm saying? And like, like when we was on the road and doing our thing, and like they was at the studio when they made, when they made, I bet you can't do it like me. You know, we was already, Lean With A Rock With This Shit was already out on the radio. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the street shit kind of spilled over to the music shit because back then the streets was the music. You see what I'm saying? The streets was the music. The entourage was the entourage. So if, if my nigga feel some type of way, my nigga gonna tell one of his nigga, fuck you. His nigga gonna tell, well, fuck y'all. And then, you know, when the tension start, then you gotta side with your niggas. And this is how it happened. And I think that kind of spilled over into the into the music thing. You know what I'm saying? Like me and Moot B, we had like Moot, okay, Moot B got us the goddamn deal. All right. Well, Moot B hooked us up with Coco Brother, and that's how we end up getting a deal. So we was using Moot B as our manager. You know what I'm saying? And um, uh, at the time. So we was doing shows and shit. So something had happened about some money. You know what I'm saying? And it was a whole bunch of things about the motherfucking money. And we were like, shit, move B got the money. You know what I'm saying? Shit, you charge them more for shows, you charge them more for shows than than what you telling us. You see what I'm saying? And the shit just came out. So me, me and Mook B end up having a, a fist fight. You know what I'm saying? So that's what really kick this shit off. Kick this shit off. Just to be honest. So, so then Mook B went from managing y'all to being in D4L? Mook B always been in D4L from the get-go. 
before well started because Lo didn't know nothing about no music. See, you gotta understand, Mook B is Bankhead. He's like the MC, the host of Bankhead. Like, if you want to know anything about Bankhead, you hit Mook B because Mook B been doing music. So when it came to music, Lo didn't know nobody to do music, so he went to Mook B. See, D for Well got started in 2000 when I tell you I, when I wrote this money song. Because I would leave Doug High School, me and Peel. Peel used to be signed to Maybach Music. We would go to Mook B shop, and, and he would show me how to write bars. You know what I'm saying? And Lowe used to come up there and have meetings because when they came up there, me and Peel had to leave. Because, you know, Lowe bit down. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, so when he coming up there, it's like, yeah, hey, Lowe finna come up here. So, you know, we'll, we'll go outside and shit. So d World is a record. Record label got started in like 2000. Moot B, Lamar, and this girl named Tip was the only artist at the time. You know what I'm saying? They didn't become a group until after, after we got signed. So, so I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to just get the timeline. So, so he, so but, so they already was all linked up. But y'all, what was the separation between? You and Mook B, where, where then, then then they went and made like the same type of kind of songs and dance, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like 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 that. That's what I'm trying to kind of get to. Like it was like, because the whole the whole sound and the feel was Bankhead. You know, yeah. all this shit got all this shit happened at the pool palace. All these careers and all this shit happened at the pool palace. So you got like after I did the money song, I did the remix with D for Will. You know what I'm saying? Mm. After we got our deal, like with, with White Teeth, it was the money song, then White Teeth, then we got the deal, like the six months. So while we had the deal and shit, that one d for well, but you know, started being becoming the group. Because at first, Charlotte Lowe wasn't even a rapper yet. He didn't start rapping until, until later on. And Money Remix, my song Money, I did the remix with d for well, and this one Lowe first started rapping. You see what I'm saying? So like, and this one, Fabo first became part of the group. This was in 2004. But 2002 and 2003, D4L as a label was already started. See, this is how far I go back. This is before. That's why I'm telling you. That's why I understand what Fabo was saying. You're going to leave me at your life because these things was going on before if it was a group because all of us from Bowen Home, all of us from the same project. You see what I'm saying? So we was brushing shoulders and handling this shit before this. You see what I'm saying? So after we came out, after we came out with you no know, white tea or that like me was out and live with it, rock with it. That's when they did. I bet you can't do it like me, because lean with it, rock with it came out in two thousand and six. Levy Taffy came out in two thousand five, and then bet you can't do it like me came second. But lean with it, rock with it, and bet you can't do it like me was out before they even recorded Levy Taffy. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because these songs are already in the streets. The public heard these shits at these times. So right. you just, just want to get online and be like, yeah. this song came before this song. You don't really know. That's when the song got put to y'all. Right, right. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, so like, so when, so when they seen us on TV, that's when they did. I bet you can't do it like me. When yeah, we was on but, TV, like, doing with the rock with. Like, bro, even even with even with them saying that shit, once we seen y'all niggas on TV, that's what we did. And like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know, bro. I, you feel me? I'm on the outside looking in. You feel me? Like me, that that just seemed like that just don't that's just like like no that ain't cool like you know what I'm saying like I fuck with you know what I'm saying that I, but that's I, why I say sure it's not a Fabo, debate you feel me but that's why I always say that's why I went on that's why I went live with Fabo to discuss this to to talk about these timelines and to talk about this because how the first song that y'all had was I bet you can't do it like me and y'all talking about lean with it rock with it how did Y'all start doing something before we did. When I showed you that this dance that we talking about, two, three years later, we was doing a white T video. Oh yeah, what 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 was he saying? Like y'all reshot the video or some shit like that? Like re I reshot the He was the saying video? he was trying to say like he was he was trying to say like before I started rapping, I used to see him. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I did white T. But I'm explaining to him. That's a lot because I came home from college rapping. I started rapping in school before anybody in the project even knew I was rapping. Anybody in the ball home didn't even know I was rapping. That's why I'm telling him, no, it's not. You knew me from trapping, Fabo. You didn't know me from rapping, but I was already rapping. You see what I'm saying? 
See, because the, the, the streets knew me as Pooh. When I started rapping, my rap name was Parlay. So, like, my little brother was in middle school at the time, all right? And niggas was letting him hear the song. And he heard it, and he didn't know it was me. Because me rapping wasn't nothing I was bragging about. I was just doing it. Like, it was like, okay, I'm bored, so I'm just going to do this shit. You see what I'm saying? So I went, like I said, I never tried to, I never tried to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? I just did it. When Born Home was hot, I would leave Born Home to go to Ella Temple. When I did that, that's when I recorded music. We used to start off getting shows like $5,000. They would come to Born Home to come get me to do the show. And i tell them I'm coming. And i go out the back door and I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go to the show. Because I was like, I'm not going to leave the trap to go make twelve fifty. We're not going to make 8000 You see what I'm saying? So it was a struggle a long time for me to even take the music shit serious. Like, what people don't really know, bro, like, we probably, we the only group in hip-hop history to ever have two number one singles back-to-back. -back. In 2005, we had Oh, I Think They Like Me. In 2006, we had Lean With The Rock Me. All right? In 2005, I called a murder charge. In 2006, I called a traffic charge when they bust my studio. Called 160,000, you know what I'm saying? The weed, all the guns and shit like that. So in the two, in the two, in the in the biggest of my career, when I got number one records out, I don't caught the two worst charges you catch being a street nigga. You know what I'm saying? I was really living this shit, bro. Like most niggas come in the game talking about gangster shit, and they're not not even no gangsters. I came in the I came in the game dancing and having fun, and I was really a gangster. You see what I'm saying? Like the streets will tell you. I don't have to. I don't have to go around saying this shit. Like the streets know. So it was two different. It was just two different things. You see what I'm saying? And go ahead. Do 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 you do you feel like you and franchise boys get the respect y'all deserve? As you know what I'm saying? Fuck no. Fuck no. Ti don't even got white tea in the trap museum. Mm. How? And I got word they said because White T ain't a trap song. Hold on. Let me think about these lyrics. Slang in my White T. Bang in my White T. All in the club spin game on White T. I'm clean in my White T. Serve fiends in my White T. Oh, it's not. A, we ain't talking about trapping. Like, come on now. Real nigga shit. So you definitely feel you know slighted by your own We made this. We made this sound popular. D for well didn't make this sound popular. We made this sound popular. We produce our own beats. D for well don't produce their own beats. I produce Lane with it, rock with it. Pimp made white tea. Oh, I think they like me. We the producers. Not no other niggas. You see what I'm saying? That's I'm deep. the one that told my nigga Buck to put the snaps in Lane with it, rock with it, not the claps, because it went with the dance. Yep, I seen that. I'm the one that put the snaps in the beat. Yeah, y'all argued about it. That was my decision. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not understanding. And 20 years later, niggas is, niggas is still sounding like us. Like, we done birthed a lot of niggas. We done made a lot of niggas millionaires. The only niggas who give us our fucking respect, my nigga, is the Migos. They see. That's shout out to Quavo, shout out to Takeout, shout out to Offset. I love them niggas. They're my little bros. Matter of fact, if you ain't heard my first single off my new project called Realize Everybody Ain't Living Out Right Now, go cop that right now. My first, my first single is Me and Takeout called Two Pots. Go download that iTunes, Spotify. It's downloaded right now too. You know what I'm saying? Like, go get the EP. I just dropped my new single with Bloody J, Bloody J and Joe Gifted called Real Ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas know the resume. We gonna make sure we put all them links in the description too, man. So I can just click and grab them up. Bro, uh, like, how do you feel about the new Atlanta rap scene? I love everything from Atlanta, homie. Like. I'm not biased, bro. Like, if it happened, it happened. If he did it, he did it. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. If I, if this is how I feel, that's how I feel. You see what I'm saying? But anything from Atlanta, my nigga, I'm with it. It's my city. I support anything coming out this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck what it sound like or what they did or how niggas see them in the streets. Because at the end of the day, I can't, I can't get mad at a nigga for using his social skills and his abilities to be a millionaire, even if he say he a gangster, he not a gangster. It ain't for me to goddamn come tell a nigga, bro, he ain't living that shit he talking about. That ain't for me. 
That's for you, the believer, to, to believe whatever you see or not. Because anything publicity, have this shit that nigga see anyway is fake. Who, if, if I was to try to make everybody who ain't really doing this shit doing this shit, I have to call out half empty. You see what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't for that. You see what I'm saying? So whatever nigga doing out this shit, I'm gonna support this shit. I'm gonna salute it. I love it. I'm fucking with it. All these all these young niggas mm, changing lives, changing their family lives, putting their hoods on. You see what I'm saying? Only thing I ask is if you gonna if you gonna say you real, be real. That's a hundred, man. That's a hundred. So, bro, if you if you could speak to everybody who's been supporting you all this time, man, if you could directly talk to them, what would you say to them? Uh, shit, man. You can listen to what I say. You can take heed to it. You know what I'm saying? I don't lie. I ain't gonna lie to you. If I, I'm, I might fuck up. I might do some shit nigga might not like. I might do some shit nigga don't agree with. You know what I'm saying? But whatever I do, I'm gonna stand on that shit. And I'm gonna have a reason why I did it. You see what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, I ain't gonna do no fake shit. I ain't gonna do no whole shit. So if you listen to me and you fuck with me, I should ask you to do the same thing. Preach righteousness. You know what I'm saying? Turn niggas on and shit. Preach their good shit. Help out. Be in the community. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the community helping out seven years straight in a row. I got probably the top seven on seven program, kids program in the state of Georgia. You know what I'm saying? I coach football year round. I coach basketball. You see what I'm saying? I'm in the community. I'm at school reading, giving, giving back, reading the kids. You know what I'm saying? Help with homework and tutorship and shit. How many other niggas say the same thing? You know what I'm saying? I've been doing this. I can brag about that shit. I got awards and accolades and posts. I got plenty of plaques and shit from schools and shit that they gave me from all the time I done spent. You know what I'm saying? It ain't about what you show the niggas. It's about what you do because you're supposed to do that shit because that's the right thing the motherfucking do. And that will make you a real nigga. So follow those steps right there, my nigga, and keep preaching that shit. No matter how hard that shit get, I know how. No matter how bad you want to fall into the goddamn what everybody else got going on, fuck that shit. Do what you do, my nigga. Period. Hey, part like man, I appreciate the interview, man. When all this good shit over with, bro, we gonna have to get one in person, man. Come down to the A and fuck with you, man. Get an interview, man. Let's get it, my dog. Let's get it. For sure, man.